slap them to the 19. Is 2020. 2020 is the year we back to our roots. That ain't gonna happen. We ain't doing the barking. Reverting Freya back to a 2017 state and an all new Joust map integrating the best features of classic Joust. Uh, the concurrence? What do you mean the concurrence? Spike Pro League coming back to multiple platforms. Plus the return of community streams to broadcast. Uh, it's Bart. It's fucking Bart. We need one big announcement just to tie this. It's Bart. Together. What's he gonna do? It's Bart. Oh, I want to know what he's doing for the company now. So Bart. you need a BA. Well, here's one BA. RT. <laughs> oh. We're in here. What's that? What is my dog barking at? He can't even see out the window. That's right, everybody. Wait, Bart, oh, he's returning to the promised land here in Atlanta, Georgia. Your favorite Patch Notes host ever is not here today i'm here though so that's wait you bart's coming back to do welcome in to the production show, everybody and for more details on what bart is going to be doing here with the high res team of course we've got to bring in alex brand manager yeah, wait, what? Might, and auburn of course as well part of the community team but we'll get to auburn in just a little bit alex let's start with you obviously it's very exciting that bart is coming back a huge part of the community and the in the story of smite over its history what what is bart's role in the prime yeah so uh as we said at the end of the video there uh bart's gonna be leading the high-res productions team uh so everything that you formerly knew as skill shot so um all live broadcasts all esports um shows like this uh you know we're trying to bring back uh, something kind of similar to high-res tv with more community focused shows um, so anything that comes about out of our studios here, uh, Bart's going to be in charge of. And, Bart's going to be doing um, some good I think shit. We're all just Fuck. really excited to have him back. Uh, you know, he's been uh, working uh, on the other coast for the last few years. Uh, um, I can't believe he came a lot back. Of practice in this area, um, and so what's up, Bobby? To see the learnings that he brings from from uh, from his time at YouTube. Bro, they uh, must have offered him a lot of fucking money, dude. Yeah, it definitely Holy feels shit. like a, a return back to the high res of old. I mean, if you watched our our high res presents video or anything like that just the the last show that we just did i mean tom in a, in a referee outfit saying preposterous yeah. things a return to form is what we're going for for season seven yeah definitely i think um we've seen more and more um high res is what we are and we're best when we're a high res and not trying to be something we're not you know yeah um so so we're going to try and do more of the things that we know the community loves uh get back to our roots and and have yeah, that's more crazy that they got them back one you just saw by the way my chest was the best please vote for me on the straw poll yeah, that's fucking nuts. That's audience. sick. Never done poorly for anybody else. Uh, speaking of next year and all the great things we're going to be doing, a lot of changes coming for esports in 2020. Let's go over some of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm still so excited about the Bart thing. I used to <laughs> write about him, and now I get to work for him. I'm a little, uh, I'm a little, little starstruck, you know. Um, yeah, but um, so first of all, I want to thank the fans for an amazing HRX. You know, the energy in that building was astounding, and a huge congrats to SK on their win. That's the Cinderella story that we all wanted, uh, and that was really amazing to watch. Um, but it is time for 2020, uh, and we are ready to dive right in. Um, we've made all of our 2020 announcements for all esports, so we have announced the Smite Pro League, um, which is going to look pretty similar to Season 6. We're making a couple of format changes to, to make the season-long experience feel a little bit more satisfying. Um, but most importantly, we are uh, going back to Twitch. That's right. We're going to be 100% uh, platform agnostic for all of our broadcasts, meaning we will be on Twitch, Mixer, Steam, and YouTube. Um, so wherever you want to watch, you can watch the there now. The fuck is on Steam? Um, oh, that's right. I forgot about that. We're also moving to weekends um, and afternoon broadcasts so that the maximum amount of viewers will be able to get their eyes on the Pro League games live as they're happening. <coughs> sure. Um, really, really exciting stuff. Um, but we're also um, kind of revamping our amateur scene a little bit. Yeah. Um, we have sort of done away with the Smite Minor League and the Smite Console League as we knew them. And we have announced the Smite Challenger Circuit and the Smite Open Circuit. Um, so we are creating this complete sort of amateur ecosystem um, with four relegations per year, um, four lands per year with a good amount of prizing attached to them. Um, and there will be plenty of opportunities for people to come into open entry brackets and then have an opportunity to, c to come compete on land, compete against challenger circuit teams um, and get really, really valuable studio experience that will help them kind of start their long-term careers yeah it's gonna be a lot of fun and of course the spl staying a, a lot like the the same that we saw last year every game still being played on land and a couple new orgs joining us as well this yes year. yes yes we have um we have two new orgs coming in we have ghost gaming and rogue esports um we're excited to have them back 
Um, or we're excited to welcome them to the league. Yeah. And we're also excited to welcome back six of the orgs who were with us in season six. We will have E United, Renegades, Space Station, Rival, the Pittsburgh Knights, and Obey Alliance coming back to <laughs> spend another year on the battleground with us. It's gonna, it's gonna be a sick year. There's no doubt in my mind. I yeah. mean, it, already the, the roster turmoil is starting to happen. We're starting to hear rumors behind the scenes and I think you guys are gonna have an absolute blast. It's gonna be crazy. The rosters of are Of course, fucked. there are gonna be some more details coming out on, on the eSports yes, website. Yes, yes. So um, we are gonna do a live Reddit AMA. We're gonna have some video content coming out. Um, and obviously the BART announcement is huge <laughs> and we have a couple of other big announcements still up our sleeves yet okay. to come. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Uh, most of that will be coming out around um, after Thanksgiving, early December. Okay, yeah, first few weeks of December. Make sure you're tuning in to esports.smitegame.com. That's the place to go. If you want to see all that information. Guys, thank you very much for joining us here on the cast. I just want to see the new god got and, and see if they Pond nerf Pond any so items. We to go over some balance <laughs> stuff and some other news in the Smite realm. Thanks, Agro. It turns out that Bart's not the only host that you all are so quiet. Today. Hindu man is not here either, so you have to make do with the me and Agro yeah. at least. Boost his sound. Today. Hello? I am joined here on the desk by Pon Pon, though. We're going to be going through some updates. Pon Pon, right here next to me. Hindu. Agro, man. Going through some updates. I don't uh, like part this. of Project Olympus, not really so much bug fixes, I would say, but more like like features and such like that yes. that are going to be coming in. We do have bug fixes, um, but they'll be on the patch notes right. on the actual website. This is more about going over a pretty big feature that we actually have coming to the game. Yeah, that's exactly right. We're going to be having that full map and keyboard support that's going to be added in now. Now, obviously, that's not so much for PC, right? That's more on you the console, console players, side of things. Go get your mouse. There's going to be some shit that's going to be happening mouse, on the PC your mouse side, is too. Pond, I guess just kind of picture, break me down with you. This is huge, right? When you have a console now, being able to play on a whole new peripheral really does open up a lot of doors. Yeah, so when you get into game, you'll be able to actually choose what peripheral you want to play with. So if you're on PC client, you can choose controller. If you're on console, you can choose a keyboard and mouse. Um, and the way it'll work is you'll actually go to a setting. You'll choose what you want. You'll have to do an input to show that you're, you're on that one. And then it will switch over everything so that you're playing on that specific input. Right. Um, and the big thing here is we're also going to matchmake you and actually do uh, like matchmaking around what your input is, not necessarily right. a console. So now PC players who play on keyboard and mouse and console players who play on keyboard and mouse will be matched together. PC players who play with a controller and console players who play with a controller will play together. And so this just makes it so that everyone has their ability to choose what they want to play with, choose what group of players they want to play with. And it's just a really exciting feature coming to Smite. I mean, this is awesome. I know a lot of people that like to play on consoles because it is more accessible. A lot of yes. the times your family might even already have one. A big PC might be hard to swing. But now the only pitch you got to make here is, you know, a keyboard and mouse. I can hop in there, yep. maybe play with some of the big boys too. So I think this is a, a, a huge deal. Yep. And the big thing to note here is this is a really big undertaking. And so in PTS, yep. there's going to be uh, people who play on PTS for PC. Um, if they choose to play with a co uh, controller, we encourage that, mess around with the feature. But also if they notice anything different with their inputs, if they notice that something's changed, something doesn't feel quite right, right. definitely let us know ASAP. The intent is if you're on PC and you're just using your keyboard and mouse, it should be the exact same experience. We do know there's one issue going to PTS, which is the scoreboard looks Console very different. Players. Um, that's not intended. We're going to be oh. working to fix that. Um, but anything else that you see, definitely definitely make a point of it. And again, also, if you're on console, since we don't have a console PTS, um, if you are in live and you play on this that day, um, and there's any issues that pop up, we are willing to hotfix to actually identify those issues and get them resolved as quickly as we can. Sounds like that's something we're trying to make sure that we're on top of. Pon, you always love to hear that, so that's exciting that crossplay okay. changes as well as the full mouse and keyboard support. Those do kind of tie in all together, I would I would yes. sort of say. Yeah, I think that we've we've kind of hit the big notes. Anything else you want to make sure I didn't leave yeah. out on this one here? There's definitely some specific notes for the matchmaking stuff, and I would definitely refer to the, the Passion's document that'll have all the full right. details, but for example, like um, you won't be able to use keyboard and mouse by Xbox only or PS4 only mode is enabled. These options will force you to use the game pads. There's caveats now, like that. What is going on with their the stream? Um, so definitely if you're interested in this and you're interested in trying different input there types, go. definitely uh, go read the patch notes show the so you can get or patch notes doc and read all the details. And just because like I have a controller plugged in, I'm not automatically yeah, you using to, gamepad. You gotta go enable it. Yeah, there's a, there's a right. whole thing where you enable it and then you have to A <clears> and then it changes right. all stuff, yeah. And so that, that means that you can still have that option, but if you're using a gamepad for input, you're with gamepad. If you're using keyboard and mouse, you're with keyboard and mouse. That's how we're gonna be looking. Bro, going that's forward, on Switch too? That's not the only mouse thing keyboard that's gonna be here. Let's start to move I into some balance, it. the nitty gritty, yeah. I suppose, here, Pon Pon. We're starting Post with worlds. item balance. Post Worlds, as you said, we saw a lot of stuff happening at the SWC. Not a ton here, but I do think that we, we should talk about it. This is kind of our last update for, what are they for gonna season nerf? six, right? And I think yeah. in that context, there's not a whole lot that's going to be changing dramatically with items in particular Tuzano? as we're starting to get ready for season seven. Yeah, we're in full swing with season seven, so we kind of know what's going to be coming up. Um, so we wanted to really just focus mm -hmm. on anything that we could do for the last patch of season six, focus on any uh, quality. Change changes we could make anything that showed up in worlds that was a, a pretty large change in like how players are playing sure. make sure we address that so that going into Hercules? season seven we had a good 
basically based Thor. On yeah, and Thor. there's a lot They're of good stuff Thor, that's going to be coming here in season They're six. Thor, We've yeah. already had a chance to talk to, to kind of show it at, at Hyra's Expo. Hopefully, you all had a chance to take a look at that as well. Some stuff coming up with the, with the new Joust map that's going to be happening as well. That's <laughs> going to be kind of a, a mix in that, between dude. of the old Joust map and the new one that you all have gotten to know and love. So yeah. that one's very exciting to me. I'm a big 3v3 <laughs> main myself. Uh, there, there's a lot of good stuff coming up in season seven. Yeah, it's exciting. Uh, <laughs> definitely look at the keynote and anything that we sent out during SWC for more information on that as well. Yeah. And then we'll have more as we get closer. Exactly right. A lot of stuff from that season seven to make sure that you all are on top of before those big changes start to come through. Now, one item change we do actually have here for you that we can go ahead and talk about. This is this change here to Jade Emperor's Crown. And mm -hmm. this has become a pretty popular item, especially for a lot of our solo lanes. Yes. In particular, let's be honest, Jormungandr uses yes. this item a lot. Jormungandr right? with this item was uh, just incredibly potent. We knew this item was strong, yeah. and we saw the purple <laughs> really pick up on it and start using Later, it. Later, bitches. We figured this was an item that, <clears throat> with what we saw at it's Worlds, so was worth a more immediate adjustment. And so you can see that we've reduced the power reduction aura from 30 to 20. Just a hit to the item, tone it down a little bit, bring yeah. it a bit more in the line in those situations. Still strong, but a little bit easier to manage against. You're right. You're still going to have the, the protection that are on the item itself. It's this aura in particular that's reduced. We saw a lot of times physical, or ju physical jungler, physical solo laner with gank Yorm. Oh, yeah, why can I hear someone breathe that you hear? Just really, really strong in that case. That's been touched down just a little background. bit. And that should do it here for us with items at the very least here, Pawn. Yep. But there is going to still be a good amount of God balance that is on the way. And the very first one here on the list is Camazots. And from what I'm seeing here, Pawn, looks like oh. Camazots actually getting a good amount of love oh, here this time. Yeah, Camazots has been kind of lower on the totem pole, uh, pole this whole year. Um, he was really came, he came in as like a counter to King Arthur. But outside steal. of that, he hasn't really seen much use. And so we wanted to focus on what makes him unique, and that's his life stealing aspect, his heal self sustain aspect. So we've done a lot I of buffs here to self sustain, like Essence Drinker God. getting uh, increased passive buff from six to eight percent. More boring on uh, ninety life steal fucking healing. Ping. He also has vampire bats, which will increase the vampirism buff from three percent to four percent. So he's just getting overall more healing. Yeah. And the other big change here is the devour range. So his devour is a very short leap, but now we're going to make him more like an assassin. That leap is going to be better to, to actually close the gap and chase target. So beware of Camazots. He'll, he'll be chasing you. I think so too, man. This gives Camazots a lot more flexibility in how you play. Holy right? yeah. will be there for him. The devour <clears throat> allows you, as you said, to close that gap too. So I know there's some Camazots minions out there that are excited. Hopefully, we'll Why see a little bit just more gain of him. Now units. we already talked a bit about Jormungandr, but he's <laughs> oh, the next one we're going to be changing. Dude, Camazots is literally bad. Crown, but we're actually doing some changes to he's him so too. It looks safer. like specifically the passive, passive, immovable, what? increased damage taken from 10% to 15% when the debuff is active there for Jormungandr. Yeah, so there's a lot of characters Ooh. that kind of rely on their ability to push and pull targets or to knock back and knock up um, to really control. Uh, yeah, it is solo Camazot's getting a buff, um, but it's giving you played in the jungle now too. That's yes. a passive. That's the, he's immovable. <laughs> you take 5% um, more damage we get, now. We did add a component where when he gets hit by them, Crazy. he's not just completely immune. He does take a little bit of bonus damage. When you get knocked the counterplay up. for, for basically immunity that knock up wasn't quite equal. Uh, it wasn't much of an equal trade. And so we're increasing that damage that he's going to take so that he's a bit more easy to fight, especially against characters that have multiple knock or multiple things that Bro, are being Kema's leap is That's far right. as shit We've already now. seen gods who have really good ganks up against Jormungand are the ones who proc this passive. Now that same passive will be <clears> even stronger. <throat> yes. So hopefully this wouldn't take Jormungand out. Just bring him back in line a little bit more. Yeah, I give more counterplay options. Yes, just make it a little bit easier when you're going up against him. But that's Jormungand. Next up is Kuku Khan. Another snake. And he has suddenly popped up here in the meta, hasn't he? I <laughs> do think those whirlwind nerfed. changes did the goal, right? He is way Told more popular you. here now. But it does seem like he's getting played everywhere, getting played all the time. Yes. So these changes make some sense to a me. Revert, the whirlwind, a slight revert. It's a partial revert on whirlwind application time, <clears throat> as well as a partial revert on the whirlwind damage. What can you tell me about this? God one? has yeah, a 70% so win rate. Yeah, from being a little bit broken. underwhelming to the most winning god in the game, yes. and <laughs> clearly everyone was like, yeah, he's actually really strong now. He definitely feels much stronger. I thought um, he was strong there's before a middle ground those there, right? Like If he was underwhelming with previous numbers, he was a little bit too strong with these numbers. We can find a middle ground there to make sure that he feels a bit more responsive on the tornado application, as well as the damage being a bit more fair. Exactly <clears> right. That increased refresh application time from 0.25 seconds to 0.35 so a little bit more time to work with there and then the damage is decreased per tick from 10 to 50 to 9 to 45 so these aren't huge i wouldn't say this yeah. is just meant to kind of nudge him back a little bit more bring him back he's in still line. stronger than he was before the buff occurred yes for sure at this point still stronger than that at the very least that'll do it for kuku khan those are some of the big changes a couple not too huge ones but certainly could have some implications coming up next ola run has had his decrease his base power decreased from 40 to 38. What's this here with Olrun getting a little bit of a nerf? So we've seen just a lot of major DC changes in general, and Olrun is kind of the Rip one most Kuku? sensitive nah, Kuku was has, good uh, before the buff, game man. ability as well as his late game scaling with that ultimate uh, kind of exacerbate those changes a little bit. And so throughout the 
season, we've watched that him kind of evolve with these changes. Um, and so we've been adjusting his base damage accordingly. For right now, his early game is a little bit too good for how good he gets <laughs> in the late game. Sure. We're just bringing that down a little bit so he's a little bit easier to box and he can't get as far ahead as early as he can. Paul, and that's the theme I'm noticing. We're trying to make counterplay a little bit stronger against these yeah. guys. Oleran in the early game should be a little bit weaker to be so strong late. I like what I'm hearing there, at least for Oleran. Next one up is Set. And he's been popular even in the ADC role, hasn't yes. he? We've been seeing Set all over the place. That was fun to see. Yeah, I, you like seeing him being taken over there when he can work. <coughs> that no. change for him is going to be on Skewer. It this increased one the cooldown has a from second seven seconds to eight longer seconds. Cooldown. Just going to decrease how often this can happen. Yeah, this is what, especially the, the top end players who can really make use of the clones and aim that Skewer and use it on cooldown to get really aggressive poke. They make the most use out of this. Make um, and Baron? that's really what we're targeting. Is we're seeing very high Baron. end set players who can use this all the time. Oop, a little bit of a <laughs> fall. Yep. Uh, the, the set players who can use this all the time, they're the ones that are really... Uh, pushing Bro, him into Hindu, these man. lanes and really bullying people. So this will tone that back. People have more options, more opportunities. They're to not avoid touching it Freya. Options. There's no way. In general. Shouldn't have to worry about it quite as often. And then what I would say is, is our, our biggest change. They wouldn't know what to do on Freya. It's going to be with this problem. next one. Yamoja is the next one. Buff? Up. And I would say that these are all largely buffs, buffs here for Yamoja. Buffs? Trying to bring her a little bit more in line. And a lot people are has still going to I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about Yamoja just in general yeah. here before we move into it. What, what made you want to come in and adjust her? So I think the big thing here is we We've noticed that uh, this season we've had a lot of characters that have this like higher skill ceiling overall. She's hard. And we've watched people like yeah, have people to learn these characters her, and really like, grasp with their mechanics and figure out what's going on. And we've also, in general, they've been released a little bit weaker, as well as we've just watched how they perform. Bro, people just suck at her because her skill sucks. This has actually worked really well for us the whole year. And so you're just no exception. Mojo releasing a little bit weak uh, on the on the low end, actually kind of more on the lot on the low no, end. No, they're not buffing very. Uh, but we want to watch and see how people play with her. And the big thing we noticed were, were two major things. One is her skill shots were hard to hit. Yes. Uh, they are just uh, different shapes um they have some extra okay. components about how they scale not a lot of other abilities is that fire the way you if you're an average exactly. player it's so fucking hard we noticed that she was just not dealing as much damage as the characters even outside of that shouldn't be that hard that she could and we also saw people not liking being pigeonholed into one specific build to get omi um you had to build up to 600 mana i believe in mp5 to actually get all three stacks they're gonna make and it so 500 really mana with these changes is we're looking at and they're gonna make omi the abilities wider overall now only one of the omis is gonna be locked behind Watch. mana and the rest is gonna be broken level so maybe you can't rush it as quickly as as possible but you also don't have to build certain specific paths to get your Omi online. Um, and then we're also increasing the actual uh, radius of Wait, it's still 600 ones, cap? What the fuck? Uh, 1A and 1B. Isn't uh, that what it so was before? a bit more easy to hit, a, people, a bit more reliable, Wait. Um, allowing players to actually land those more successfully. Wasn't um, it already even, like, 300, 450, 600? Ability. Yeah, I think that there's a, something to be said for bringing in some of that variance. You felt like you had to build like the cooldown boots, yeah. breastplate all the time with the emoji to get that mana online, but this should open it up. Yeah, consistency um, is key here. Oh, yes, you I get two Omi. Omi for reaching level 12? So, like fuck? you said, reaching level 4 and 12, that's how you get that bonus Omi 1 and 2. And then for bonus Omi 3, you do still want some mana in here, but yeah. 300, I think, pretty easy uh, to kind of come by. You're not necessarily okay, so it's not 600 anymore, it's 300 and, and then level. Valor, especially just with her kit in general. That's fucking really nuts. Anyway, yes. so. Yeah, not, not, that's not actually by accident, not, that yeah. I think is good there for her. Another change here, just want to make sure that we hit on it really quickly. Not allowed in those infinite, or in the ma match of the day modes with infinite mana. Obviously, Yamoja with that interaction. It just changes that you can build like yeah, a normal sure person now. Yes. Permanent stun lock with the ones. And also with that, we're doing Increase the well. radius Kingarther of been bouncing in that mode for a while. Bubble. He can get into state where he can ultimate. That's not the problem. People can't land the that's stun. That's another character that broke the rules in a lot of ways. And when you combine that rule breaking with match of the day rule breaking, you yeah. get some interesting uh, interactions. On. We're just uh, this not going to let that happen yeah, just a heads up for you all. Those won't be in that mode that anymore. Can't be as you're seeing down here, bouncing bubble. This is what you uh, mentioned earlier mm -hmm. has had that radius increase from 12 to 14. A bit of an odd ability with that second yes. bounce and everything. This should make that a little bit easier to hit. And then Moonstrike, which you already mentioned, had the increased minimum radius Told increase from you. 10 to 12. Yeah, they increased the it. one with yeah. that slide. So that range, yeah, it when has it's a bigger. It's smaller when it's further, it's larger. Right. So this means that even when you're using it, that when range, it's at that closest bigger. range, it should be a little bit easier to hit Correct. than it was before. That's good. And then Mendy. Waters, I think, largely considered her one of her strongest abilities. This one appears to have also Holy been getting fuck. a little bit of love. The increased healing from 20 to 100 to 30 to 130. I still so think people are going to suck dick on your mojo. You get towards the end of that one, it seems like increased. Yeah, and this is really focused on. We no, they increased your mojo stun and at range. Kind of expected, sure. as well as when you're far away on your mojo, the circle is teeny tiny. When you're up close and you use the one in front of you, it's big. It's not bigger up close, it's bigger far away. Now that the healing also felt impactful. 
I like it, Pond. Just about everything here. Yeah, sounds people are like still gonna suck dick on your mojo. Or hundred percent. Consistency. They're yeah, not gonna hit their shit. They're not gonna position but, correctly. You know, I think we kind of nailed this balance section, yeah, man. Awesome. Any, anything else you wanted to make sure that, they, that we hit on before we throw it back over to Agro? No, Baron. I mean, I'm just excited Skins for a new god, baby. Up. Oh, that's I'm exactly right. Amped. Make sure that you all are sticking around. New god, gonna be talking about a little bit later on in the show. Jungle Hunter, baby. This is not the new god. I got to send you all back over to Agro. Gee, sorry, Finch. Didn't know it was gonna be <laughs> such a problem for you to throw it back over to me, but I'll do I'll do my best, I guess. You've got some I'll, viking like features. Yeah, so I know. Yeah, I think that's... I can do the job okay, <laughs> but luckily I'm not alone here. We've got Tyler, we've got Chris, we've got Fishman joining us. It's time to go over some of the Odyssey skins coming up next. Cinnamon. We're gonna start it off with one that I'm excited for, because this is a god that I've been playing a lot of as of late, which is Achilles. If you watch Bel Air and the way that he played it at the World Championships, you've probably been spamming it too. We're gonna kick it off with Soul Piercer. Achilles and we've got a lot All of skins for you today Achilles. so let me let you know right off the bat because this is the last patch of season six a little bit of a longer downtime between this and the next update Boring skin. we're gonna have some extra skins to show you I'm sure you won't be complaining too much the thing is, as soon as you take the armor off, this, it's boring. Yes, it's just a plain ass skin, content, and you play actually, ninety percent yeah, of the sure. game with that, no armor. Yeah, lots of it. We've got we got plenty of skins to go over, but this yeah, one this in some Mamba I'm toenails. For. Let's take a listen to the voice pack here for Soul Piercer Achilles. I'll try to keep my temper under control, but these other gods are already getting to me. When I get angry, I'm supposed to count backward from ten, but I count kills instead. Do you want to be a charred corpse? Because taunting me is how you end up a charred corpse. Okay, so we've done scary. some form <laughs> shifts with get Achilles it. before. He's got the one where he goes cat form or man form. You know, you got a couple of things like that. This one, so much for that pure demon. Yeah, just so simple. Man. Evil presence. For yeah, sure. On a skin exactly. that only has, on a god that only has simple skins. Man demon, sort of, sort of in between for him there. I, I'm here for it, man. I yeah. love these little forms with the kills. Terrifying. Uh, yeah, and uh, both forms, the uh, artist uh, Quinn did a really good job on these. Uh, that's really, really terrifying. I don't know. All the effects read well, and they've got this like fiery theme to them that, that I'm really liking. Yeah. Hell is hot. Yeah. So I've heard. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. I haven't been there personally. But. No. <laughs> it's, well, it, we're just guessing, more yeah. or less. Yeah. I, I think that Achilles is just one of those gods that it needs to flow really well and, and have all of his sort of movements in, in this is boring form skin. Kind of just move readable. on. Mm -hmm. and I think Skin's boring. Yeah, you, know, you notice how they're in arena rather than yeah, Conquest is, uh, to appease the casual like players? Kind of agile, uh, like silhouette that we really like <laughs> for, for Achilles stuff. Um, but really bad they literally did this so casual players would watch Pat Super cool. Absolutely. Just Amazing, honestly. Yeah, yeah I, really like that. I like the profile of the spikes and the shape of the shield. Like it, even though the shield is a defensive thing, it has a very like aggressive profile to it. I like it. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Is that an eyeball in his chest? Is that like yeah. A... yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I well, love, you need to, love, you love, need love, to be able to see a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> down in hell. Um, I know you guys haven't been there. Hiding yet, map so, like, changes. Help you out. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, it's dark. That's very important. That there. would mean yeah. they'd be on the PTS. Yeah, so a little bit lower. Than the be a weird thing to hide. Yeah, no, th that's cool because uh, I know we we do like gems a lot and that kind of thing uh, as like a body accessory. So the idea it's not about like, patch notes viewerships. I don't know. It's patch notes really viewers really watching this and then going and buying the skins. It's marketing. Markings like I don't know, Eye of Ball or like like Sauron. Yeah. Like somebody looking on you. If like you never play Conquest you and you see a god running around on Conquest map, it looks less no appealing. No one has an eyeball on their chest and you're like, that guy's probably. Cool. I mean, I, yeah. you know, I don't think chill. the map yeah. changes are coming coffee. until next yeah, year. Exactly. <laughs> so, you know what, yeah. what that guy's about if yeah. he's got an eyeball on his chest. So I think that I'm like it, it 100 percent sure they're not going to put map changes out till season seven. All right, next up, Shadow Step Mercury is next up. Again, these are all part of the Odyssey. And this one, another shit Mercury skin looking like Circuit. And I have been waiting not so patiently. For <laughs> I it. hope this looks good, really, I though. Love this skin. All Mercury yeah. skins yeah. are bad right now. <laughs> Please be good, Mercury skin. Such a unique silhouette. Please. Like, it's really iconic. Like, you could see this guy in his own game. You know what oh, I mean? Like, yeah. With that <laughs> hair. In his own for game? Sure. What? That's a really hair. good product. Protagonist hair. Really, yeah. Yeah. Where's the yeah, weak in Mercury skin? What's going on with this guy? All right, let's take a look at him in game and listen to the voice pack. That last fight was a bore. Hope these foes put up a better challenge. Who needs to be stealthy? If you move fast enough, no one can see you anyway. Okay. I've spent years training in the ninja way. I know. To face the abilities are going to look underwhelming. No. No. 
He's got protagonist voice too, guys. That's, <laughs> yeah. I mean, we're 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 really doing it right now. Step saga. <laughs> That's oh yeah, yeah. What time is this show on? <laughs> yeah, I like the, I like the <laughs> colors. Speaking of which, it's very funny. The, Normally the, like, these little notes, it's, purplish it's, it's maroon. supposed to say new ana anim. This stands for animation, but there's a typo that says new anime. Basically, yeah. to, yeah. to match new proportions. I didn't even realize there's a typo. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure. I was like, oh yeah, he's got a new Plain anime skin. coming out. It's not bad, but it's not good. Right away. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's been far too long. I don't think we have enough ninja skins because ninjas are just outright cool. I'm down for I like every that color in the 100 to get a ninja skin. I like sure. the scarf because you don't yeah, see it all, the all too often. The scarf is perfect. The the made you look kind of like rear back that he has on that animation is is really really perfect. Okay, we're trying to overhype this. I'm, I'm the animations are over how, nothing. Like, iconic he looks like. I, I really love the this color scheme. the fucking like super, flail super, out from the super one. Cool. That part's yeah, dope. You can definitely everything tell else is just a little a bit of a different. He looks a little bit. Like of a, di it's a different run animation. He's a little bit bulkier almost. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like a lot of work. I'll give him that. They didn't fuck up the run animation. It looks so much better than the last skin to make it work to this skin. The run totally. animation There's is solid. always a lot of. We, we've kind of gotten uh, really tight knit the the between the rigging, the animation, and the modeling teams um, to pull off this kind of thing. Uh, and yeah, it's it's true for a lot of these kinds of skins. There's a lot of rework that goes into the rig. Yeah, it's and, like a six um, out of ten skin kind of thing. So. Uh, Maybe it, a it low seven. Really well here. I'm digging it. There it is. It's, uh, there's it's nothing wrong with it. Mercury. Oh, there's like nothing that makes me like, <laughs> yeah, I want to play Mercury player, now. Yeah. Got, gotta love that. Next up, Crystal Fay Isis. Next up on the list. She's the stones keeper of the Fay Kingdom, collector of beautiful things, and guardian of the royal vault. Gorgeous. Now, normally, Tina would be on here about to go into a little bit of detail on the Yeah, why does this look like Discordia? That, I guess, is for Isis to know and for us to find out. Aren't you <laughs> glad you get to do the lore? No? Yeah. I hope yeah, the yeah. colors um, and the abilities yeah, so look the cool in this skin. Oh, sorry. I was just about Potential. to go into it, but they told me that the in game stuff is ready, so we got to go to that. Oh, right sure. Now. Yeah. Don't have enough time, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So close. <laughs> <laughs> Stones are my livelihood. I will protect them with my life. What happens if you cross a werewolf with a fae? A hairy fairy. <laughs> Damn, it got me. Stay back. This moonlight stone holds untold powers. There you go. That's all the lore you need. Feel yeah, like there you go. Hairy fairies. What, <laughs> yeah. a, uh, what else do you want? There you go. Look, look at these gorgeous all wings. There. Yeah. Like, there's, this, so the wings do look cool. On the oh, new Isis fuck. Model. Okay. It looks really good. Yeah. And that's talk right. about setting the bar high. Those are some the, little these these wings autos. are absolutely amazing. And the effects on these abilities. I, like the I mean, two. just even the tar the effects targeters on the ground before you start throwing that stuff. That two is beefy. That is a huge part for me of which skin I'm gonna use. I'm, I'm loving this skin already. Yeah. I love it. I, I really do think throughout 2019 and going into the new year, we've like really stepped up uh, some of the art on these skins. I mean, this is just gorgeous. I'm sorry, you decide what skin you use by the targeters? Partially, yeah. It, it, listen, it's it's a it's all together. You know that is okay. important to me. It's part yeah, of a nice. comprehensive picture. Yeah, sure. That's... But you want nice like crisp targeters so you can know that you're yeah. running abilities. It looks yeah. cool. So I like. Two I, I am starting to put clean. more abilities on instant cast these days. You can so actually see to what's gonna hit. Than I used to. I like, like if I'm just hovering, if I'm walking the lane. And I hover this first, you know, the wing gust, and I like the targeter that I'm looking at. Oh, it's cool. gonna make me happy on the inside. Mm -hmm. you know? That's cool. That's gonna that's gonna set me up to to do well in lane. You know, it's a mentality thing. Take yeah. just a moment to talk about the staff too. Like yeah, the staff, I, I really love different. the look and, of the staff. And the headpiece behind her head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As well. Yeah. I'm a Where does it go that. when she's not doing her thing? Her wing gust. You know. It like disappears. Fairy magic. Yeah, okay. it's fairy magic, man. It just disappears. She doesn't need it. <laughs> she places it on the ground for her ultimate, and then she yeah, sure, yeah, she snaps done. it out. She yeah. puts it in the royal vault, and That's then pulls right. it out. Boom. That's yeah. part okay. of her power. stones keeper. Mm -hmm. Okay, rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah. Come on, Chris. as the it's lore the says, right. we all try know. to keep up. <laughs> keep up, man. Look, Very fair oh my powers. God. <laughs> keep up to this guy. He's gonna. <laughs> what if Pond just ends the game before we before we can get through all the skins? Well, he's, GG's he's gonna Pond. be up to a pretty good lead. We got a hard time limit on this. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, which Bane Izanami is next up on the list? This one. Okay, skin. A very different Izanami look. Okay. But I am in the market for new glasses, and I think I'm getting a little bit of ins inspiration right here. I just don't know if I could pull off the. They're definitely rose tinted. Yeah, Those like that. Elton John glasses. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Maybe I'm not so interested. In <laughs> Let's take a look at which Bane is an I'm more here. interested now. <laughs> what the fuck? Some monsters may be immortal, but I can assure you True. they Small. always have a weakness. Hey, what do you call a criminal vampire? A fangster. <laughs> Come on. 
No further movement, or I will shoot this stake right through your heart. Now, this is a very different look for Izanami. Normally, she's freaking out a little bit. You yep. know, she, she never can quite sit still. <laughs> this is a very different for her. She's There's the first skin where she's human, mm -hmm. and, a, and a whole bunch of changes. Oh, those are we cool. Internally, kind of categorize this as a tier four skin, correct? Yeah, a lot of changes went into animation. Yeah, this skin as looks deep. Probably Not tell. bad. She's a lot less uh, atrophied, I guess you could yeah, say. A little these more days. beefy and um, complete whole. Yeah, really, really cool. Shout out to, to Hans on the character modeling team for this model, too. I love how the materials read. Just really, really a lot of presence to this skin. Yeah, I think there is another Izanami skin that has green as one of the primary colors to her effects, but it's very different than yeah. this. And, and I'm sure the base model does a lot to kind of differentiate that as well. It's not that Why is she a midget? It's also the that angle like that they're the, using. The spectral Pele skin mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. It's a little bit, it, it has that nature to it, but it has a very different feel to me. I call yeah. this lich green. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A good descriptor for it. Uh -huh. Definitely two, yeah, new weapons kind of as dark well. And normally with the sickles there, these I kind like of the, glaives. Mm -hmm. the double. That's that's cool, and I like the little flipping animation she did with him we saw her before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> this is cool. this is a super cool. It's kind of crazy that this is the first human he's an skin. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but for sure. She oh. actually is the body instead of like kind of being possessed. Yeah, exactly. Of, of body, Finally yeah. can uh, get out from under that possession. Yeah. All right. Next up, the mighty storm Jormungandr. Uh, this Yorm Why? skin has Look at this arms, card art. and oh that is the the headline for me. Yeah. Arms Yorm, he's working out. <laughs> Army Yorm, he's you know? no longer just we'll a tube. Give him arms, right. but why are we doing <laughs> He's there for lifting now. He's not just a worm wiggling around. Why do we need more let's, Yorm uh, skins? Let's take Fuck a listen Yorm. to the voice pack here from Mighty you Storm Yorm. In whenever we're ready. Dawn breaks open once again, like a delicious wound that bleeds afresh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why are dragons the best at storytelling? Look at his arms, bro. Because we all have tales. Watch your tongue. Your next words might be your last. I love this. <laughs> this is so cool. Not only Look does his it, arm. Oh my, okay, you definitely They're gonna do a chibi Jorm skin, bro. Video. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. why they put arms he on him. He is still massive. He's a big boy. <laughs> yeah. Which is everything you want. <laughs> The, the hair on the skin is so cool. There's like, uh, this has got to be some of the most work um, we've put into like individual like clumps of hair. Yeah. Uh, yeah, definitely sells the, the whole Chinese dragon thing. It turned out well. Yeah. Reminds me of a character that we used to have in Smite. Yeah, Ooh. you know, maybe just like scaled up a little bit. Yeah. Um, maybe a, a Mighty Storm that. also kind of rings a bell. We're, you know, we're. Bart's back. We're just we're we're bringing it all back to the classic. Going straight from nostalgia. We're reeling it all in. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, look, a whole lot of people just got a whole streaming oh, service. Here for it is. Nostalgia, so <laughs> here we are. Woo! So you may as well try it out ourselves. Where you go, Node? This uh, uh, this different effects too. Quang <laughs> under the, the stuff, even the under. Yorm, it's kind of a dull color on on his pools. The yeah. They're referring to old Al Quang, which is Kukulkin now. Go back from the pool to him. Yeah, they don't stand out too much on other skins, but this is oh, like yeah. it feels good. I like those uh, kind of fireballs that come out of the. Bro, way. they're gonna yeah. do a chibi Oh yeah, watch. when he dives down too, the little explosion fireballs, yeah. the little yeah. smoke trails as well. Those are great. <laughs> Incredible. I love I, I love this skin already, man. Almost and he's got arms shady. now. Yeah. Like, now he can, I don't know, eat a bowl of cereal if he wanted to. Like that wasn't really an option. Sing karaoke. You know? yeah, this, exactly. Is this a new hood thing or is it the old one? Team I thought it was old. I want to see the bowl of cereal. That's yeah. <laughs> Lucky <laughs> charms. You know? pretty a pretty big one. Shit game, right. micro. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Uh, also want to let you guys know some exciting new news. We talked a little bit of, a bit ago in one of the other previous update shows about some returning adventures at the end of this year. No. We've got a returning adventure to talk about right now. It's Fafnir's Wonderland, but without the Fafnir. Instead, with Heimdall. It's now going to be called Heimdall's Crossing. Uh, it's a lot like Fafnir's Wonderland. It's back, but where's Fafnir? The Bifrost has opened, and Heimdall is taking over the show. Fight until you fall against waves of increasingly difficult PvE encounters. Relive the zany enemies of Yuletide past and discover new challenges. Do you have what it takes to survive Heimdall's Crossing? Uh, there is a new quest as well if you play a game of Heimdall's Crossing and earn the Ferocious Hen Avatar from the original event. So you get your, your good holiday cheer in while beating up on some PvE mobs with holiday your friends. It is PvE. a really good time. If you haven't played Fafnir's Wonderland, Bullshit. you certainly missed out. Now's your chance to get back into it. And now's our chance 
to get it away from me and back over to Finch on the desk. Thanks, Agro. Nice to get a chance to look at that new Yormick underskin. Looking pretty Turn nice. We'll God. talk about some community stuff here now. Still Finch. And I'm now joined, instead of Pond Pawn, by Isaiah. How you doing here, man? That's Got right. I'm doing good. How about you, man? <laughs> doing good, dude. Good. Had to have you here on the on the desk here with me. A couple things you want to make sure that we update you all on so you know what's going to be happening here throughout these next few weeks. First things first is that this is going to be a pretty good weekend to be playing some Smite, the cutesy avatar chest, and two times everything weekend. Exactly. you got a long weekend coming up with the holidays, so we want to make sure that we got stuff going on in game. Play uh, games, get two times favor worshippers and XP. What are we grinding? And if you win TV? three games, you get a cutesy avatar chest. Set the yeah, record. Not a bad deal just for playing a little bit of Smite. That's not the only thing that's going to be coming your way, though. Also, want to mention that cutesy ISIS avatar submissions are now open. So, you all can start oh, sending shit. in your own submissions. Send your art, boys and girls. We can get you into the game right next to some of send those other in. ones. Some Where of those avatars are in the game now know. are some of my favorite ones. So I yeah, hope they're so good. ISIS has a brand new look, so we want to make sure we get some new cutesy avatars to match that new look. So, if you guys want to have a chance to get your cutesy ISIS avatar art into the cutesy avatar chest, go ahead and go to smitegame.com and submit your art. And this has been blowing up on Twitter. Our next thing here, man, is that the Olympian applications for next year are open right now. I feel like this is a, a huge success this year. Oh, most definitely, they, they, yeah. they got to be really well involved. Do you want to talk about them and then, the, and then this process? Yeah, uh, first of all, the Olympians program, we started it this year, and it's been absolutely incredible. Uh, those nine uh, players uh, got... So, so much insight that they've brought to the dev team, so many changes that they've had an impact on in order to make Smite the best it can be. And we're excited that we're continuing the program into 2020. Applications are open right now at smitegame.com slash Olympians, and they will Who's close on January 1st. So you've got a little bit of time. Go but apply. if you're interested in serving on the Olympians Smite next game. year, go ahead and head over to the website and fill out an application. Yeah, and I want to no, make sure I say, you don't have to feel like you're at the top it. end of SPL knowledge to be someone that's here. There's representatives that cover a lot of different areas. Maybe if you're just constantly or if you're if you're more casual, whatever it is, there's a ton of different areas that, that we cover shit? with this. No, we need for every representation exactly. for everyone. I already impact the meta. So really, this should be open to you as long as you shit. love Smite. You think you can help. You should certainly submit. Next thing up is that Dev Chest Charity. Hopefully, you all saw that video coming into this, Isaiah. Yeah, I know so you that was a fun thing that we had card card on. Yeah. You guys oh, caught hilarious. the show beforehand. Uh, we have eight devs. We're all battling <laughs> it out for charity and to get a chance at an exclusive item in game. Eight devs drafted some of their top skins to go into a chest and those chests are going to come out uh, in mid-December. Uh, we'll have more information on the website after the show. But um, if you guys, uh, the chest that does the best, we'll have uh, <laughs> up to $25,000 donated to charity. <laughs> oh, wow. And then all the other charities that the devs chose will also get a, a, a charitable donation sent to them too. Wow, and we awesome. sent out a straw poll uh, right after the show. And unfortunately, I have to say that you guys chose the wrong answer and you guys <laughs> thought Tina had the best chest. Oh, I was in second for place. Tina. You should yeah, have put names I wasn't up. far behind, but uh, <laughs> Tina yeah. So it looks like you guys think Tina has chest. the best chest, but we'll see what happens next month. We certainly I wonder will. What that the is, Twitch that chat is something was actually great and a lot of fun on. happening all at the same time there. Love to hear it, Isaiah. What the the last day. thing to let you know is that we keep the charitable times going is that there will be a charity stream happening on December 12th. I don't know a whole lot of the, about this, but I imagine this is similar to like the Spring Fling type thing. Exactly, yeah. It's going to be our Spring Fling charity event, but in winter. It's called Winter Wishes. It's going to be on December 12th. 12th from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. We'll have more information coming out shortly, so stay tuned. Exactly right. Make sure that you keep those ears <laughs> open. You want to make sure you know everything that could potentially be happening with that. The spring fling type events are some of the most fun things oh, and things I look forward to a lot when I first started here as well, so make sure that you're keeping your eyes open for that one. But that's going to do it for us here on the desk, guys. I appreciate you joining me here, buddy. No problem. We got a lot more to get through throughout this patch note show. Remember, Heimdall New is going to be revealed baby. here a little bit later on as well with an in-depth look at his later kit. On. So we'll have all that coming at you in just a little bit. What? Thank you, Finch and Isaiah. Mostly to Isaiah. I don't know why. I just felt like saying that. We've got the same crew here with us to go over some more skins, except for one. Fish had to step out and go do Fishman stuff and said, we've got Hajiki. Certainly uh, a, a worthy replacement. Lost some hair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a sure. little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot that's shorter cool. hair than that's Fish, right. but know. it's okay. Nope. We're, we're not bringing Fish in for the hair. You know, that's, yeah. that's just kind of secondary to what else he brings. So I'm sure you'll do just fine. Less uh, hair, more content. Right? Exactly right. That's what we're looking for around <laughs> here. Want to do remind you guys that this is going to be a little bit heavier on the skin section because this is the last update before Season 7. But there's so more of course, skins? we got to get enough content in here for you before Season 7 oh, rolls shit. around. So let's kick it off with Cursed Pharaoh Hades. Hades, a skin that... Here comes the skin big skin. blew me away as soon as I saw the card art, man. I... Love it. I do have one question, though. 
Is his mouth that big? Is that what I'm seeing? <laughs> Bro, if they mean right that there? Hades Indeed. skin that just as far as I know, I mean, ate somebody? I guess we'll see for sure. But... I mean, I guess if you're going to be munching on <laughs> it's souls, not that good colors. be prepared. I love um, the fucking teal colorway. That is intimidating. Yeah. I will say. Let's take a look at it in-game. Curse Pharaoh Hades. Rejoice, my subjects. Oh, fuck. Your Pharaoh has returned. Okay. Did you say something? They need to Sorry, put him with a dark background and get him out of the gold. I'm all myself. If you will not serve me in life, you will in death. I gotta say, I love these Pantheon crossover skins. I'm a sucker for them. I yeah. think they are so cool mm -hmm. every single time. And this one is just a slam dunk. I mean, it. Pantheon crossover. Oh, they're going with the teal. They're doing blue. Pharaoh for, for Hades. Yeah. He, uh, I'm in. Simple Something skin. about Hades. He's very conducive to <laughs> another to the just simple basic uh, skin. Five out of ten, yeah. six out of ten. Absolutely. The two looks cool. Yeah. Uh, plus, Little skulls. Uh, two mouths. An additional mouth oh. on his belt. That's true. <laughs> yeah, he's got to he's got to get all the all the points. Bro, I want them to have Definitely a tier five a Hades skin where they do some crazy shit with his ult. A lot of times it's either purple like his like his wow. default or a lot of red for mm -hmm. a lot of his skins. This one a very different colored blue. That just, I think looks awesome. Yeah, it's really, it's really good. Good. We experimented a lot um, with the color, and I know <laughs> um, we really decided on that that kind of sandy core to yeah. kind of harken back to the the desert kind of theme. Uh, yeah, the effects. And, yeah, I thought they were gonna do some teal really colors, really cool. but no. Nah, for what it's worth, blue. Chris, the targeter on the two looking really good. You like it? Uh, yeah, cool, man. Yeah, That's um, sick. Make you happy? Spark joy. Yeah. I'm, I'm here for that it's one. Sparks for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the effects once it's actually fired are solid as well. Definitely. Uh, I do Not want to point out there's the. It was still kind of work in progress. There's going to be a little more detail on the one when he comes up okay. and his in hands. So okay. Keep an eye out for that. Wow. Absolutely. Nice. Yeah. Check that out. Yeah, when that's it comes a five out of ten. Yes. And of course, in game. All right. Next up, Cursed You're right, you're gonna Bloodline be late. Al Kwong. This. Oh man, yeah. that is not what I. You know, I hadn't Why seen this. Why is he one. holding this the girl? What I was expecting. Why are oh, titties I out? I haven't seen this card yet. That's yeah. so cool. Who's the lady? Here for it. Yeah, who is that? Yeah, that's unlucky for her. <laughs> yeah. Or it, or maybe is she's it? into I mean, it. She likes yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm not here to make assumptions. You know, it's Fifty Shades of Owl. <laughs> 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 and that's why we subbed Hajiki in for fish. Let's take a listen to this voice back in game. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> it has truly been years since I've had a good feast. Have you seen Mercury this is so around? Boring. All right, this I is unless the abilities are crazy. So that's three out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> the smell of your blood is irresistible. Thanks for that. That's a weird compliment that I've never <laughs> gotten before. <laughs> uh, that, yeah, that fast food joke was actually pretty solid. I gotta admit. This, I mean, uh, you want to talk normally? We've had some vampire themed skins before. Baron obviously comes to mind. Mm -hmm. But this, I mean, he is decked in some serious armor. Oh, okay, it's two's go, dope. Oh, it's two is bats. Okay, it's two's yeah. dope. Yeah, so he's all right. got all Hold kinds on. of bats now on this skin. It, Hold on, we might be really adding some score on to this one. <laughs> it looks really good. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, What's it, the three? normally it's three the, doesn't the look bad. Call, What's the one? Bat call is something that I think I can say. Yeah, the uh, one's just th red. This is uh, a right. different look for Al Kwong for sure. Looking at like a this six. This is all I want in a vampire. Like What's the, the old? giant collar, just yep. like completely oversized and like. Show the old. The, the, just the dark red. Old and pawn. And, uh, yeah. Do it, pawn. Do it. Do the old. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Yes. oh, there yeah. it is. It's into a giant bat. <laughs> okay, that is so cool. <laughs> the Camazot's mm, butts so we've been cool. waiting six for. Out of yeah, ten. I was going to say, yeah, Camazot's got some love six in this patch, but then immediately got shot down by an even bigger bat. Mm -hmm. Right away. Maybe a seven. Uh, his pose. We'll too. see like once his, I play his it. Stance is I like the two a lot. To oh. like that vampire look, the two is you know? sick, yeah, and throwing the two looks sick. Just emanating. It's not red. It's like got like a green fucking mm -hmm. shit when he throws the bat, and or like a teal green. Times true for Al Kwong. All right, next up, Six Hammerhead or seven out of ten. Vulcan. This is one of my favorites. What the I fuck? Really, really like this one. How did I not? I, I saw so many skins before this patch, and I was like, wow, there are some sick skins that people are really gonna like, and I managed to miss. So many more. <laughs> what is this? Skins. It actually is, is insane. This one, it, it's Shark Vulcan, man. <laughs> who, who comes up with this stuff, number one, and then executes it this well? I don't understand. Let's take a listen to the voice back. Our mighty foes are you? That smells fishy. You fell for that one. Hook, line, and sinker. My people are proud. 
and I'm going to make them even prouder. <laughs> Just going to say, I'm glad fish don't have feet in real life. Yeah, it reminds me of old Poseidon. <laughs> yeah, why feet is this hammerhead? Me a little bit. Uh -huh. uh, I guess they just wanted to sound like cool. Scaled up, but All right, all those are clean. Works. Splish, splash, all those are real clean. clean <laughs> Hammer it. looks cool too. Triple little puddles. Okay, Dude, this is what's so the cool fucking yeah. It is just so. Out. Oh my god! Right. Oh yeah. Right. I'm, 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 this I'm makes looking no at a nine or a ten here, boys. I love it. I love everything about this. Nine or a ten. We'll yeah, see what the three in the holes are. They'd have to fuck up for it to go down. This did not be a 10. So, okay, yeah. what the <laughs> fuck goodness, was that? You know? yeah, yeah, I guess for a reason. He's got, is that a fish? Oh, is that it's a giant yeah, fucking fish! Ball. 10 out of 10. It's, like, it's a giant ball. fish! It's a, it's a puffer fish. It's a big yep. blobby puffer, puffer fish. It's beautiful. He's got his boys, man. They're Bro, not gonna where this can come from? Left field! Doing his thing out on the battleground himself. They've got to come and help him out. He definitely came with a squad. Yeah, he's rolling squad D. A school. Even. Also, these splashes are really nice on his meatball and his ultimate. So, Show yeah, me this fucking really all, dude. What? Yeah, what really could it be? And his passive effect on him too. Please don't fuck up the all. Please don't fuck up the all. Please don't fuck up the all. Yeah. This, this skin is so crazy. The, a lot of the materials on his skin re read really oh, well for that too. He's got this like really uh, specular kind of read on him. Eh. Uh, it's, the all is pretty boring. The rest of the too. stuff is too cool are those, to knock are it down. Those little sharks that he shoots all out. All is boring. The one, the two, and the three are six. I think it's two more little little it's puffers. Little puffer fishes, but yeah, they're yeah. all puffed, you know. Yeah. Okay. Different puffer fishes. The one, the two, and the three are six. Unpuffered. Unpuffered. Still, fuck. Do I knock it down for the shitty all? Land. You know, it's nine point five. Do you think they die every time he does that? No. Um, I think 9.5. No, it's just uh, too boring. From a molecular level. Nice. Okay. It had so yeah. much potential, bro. It could have been anything. Of the water. He could have thrown so a giant shark. He could have thrown a fucking giant octopus. He, 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 he could have done so much. He's kind of wiggling a little bit. He can. They got lazy on the all boys. You know, from the air. Let's be honest. They got lazy on the all. Yeah. Sold. All right. Shadow Specter Horus is next up on the list. This one, so unbelievably creepy and weird. And these skins always freak me out the most. The Bakasura one truly has given me a nightmare before. <laughs> and the Izanami and Opwatch ones are equally as creepy. And now it's it's like the big dad. What is of this? All of them, you know? This is uh, one of my favorite themes that we've done uh, over the last couple of years. Uh, and well, I think before, I know on the Apush one at least, that they were a little more humanoid, whereas this one goes into the kind of creature realm. Yeah. I really, really like it. So, so creepy. And every every voice pack has been creepy for these so far. I imagine that Shadow Spectre Horses will be much the same. I see you also like uh. to live dangerously. For me, it matters not, uh. for I exist between life and death. The forest may seem bewildering to you, but I have been lost in here for millennia. Uh, okay. Staying too long here might leave you a bit disoriented. Do be careful. Oh, that was nice of you him. You know how I badly like I want to talk back. like that? Yeah. <laughs> All you need is uh, a voice filter yeah. and uh, to do things that are bad for your voice. Nice. Funny story, actually, in college, my college professor told me that I should start smoking and drinking to lower my voice. <laughs> that doesn't sound like good advice for me. It happened naturally, so you don't have to do it, kids. Don't don't listen when they when they tell you that. The, this one is nicer than the rest, which is which is definitely a good theme for Horace. He always a protector. That's what he does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you don't spend millennia walking a forest and sound and seem normal afterwards. So I think that all of this tracks. For me. Yeah. Yeah, he stays spooky. I go as far as being but, weird. You know, he's got that that protector air very about weird. him. You know? Dude, that is that that looks like a very new animation for his alt. The kind of his kind of posturing mm -hmm. in the in the in the ghost form of that ultimate. Oh and it's yeah, yeah. Very That's disconcerting in a, in a in a way that makes a lot of sense for this. Colors are gold. Because it's like he's he's kind of. Uh, Climbing above the tree line yeah, to kind exactly. of scout. Colors, um, but yeah, I love it. This is definitely simple. like the dude you see it kind of at the end of an episode, like right as the main character's it's walking like into the simple. forest. Like, <laughs> what? Try another seven. Don't really know what's I wouldn't going go on. low on yeah, this. That's, that's what I'm seeing here. I don't really I like the way the uh, upper body, like the head looks. Too, I think it could have done more, but this whole theme. <laughs> Not bad. Really nice. Absolutely. Loving it. Shadow Spectre Horus. And the one again, is cool. The, same the one's cool and they all as cool. Bakasura, Izanami, and Opwash. So we almost got a full roster. Ready to go for that, uh, for that team composition if you want to creep out <clears throat> your opponents. 
And honestly, all those characters work pretty well together. I'm here for Horus Offwash is a pretty nasty combo. All right, Illuminator Kronos is next up on the list. Kronos hasn't gotten a skin in a long, what long time. Uh, Feels like uh, it's certainly been worth the wait just based on this card art alone. This has that potential. is a, a, a very different look. Please, for him dude, I know looks dumb in the card art. Looks way too seen in the game. A lot of uh, a lot of different stuff with this Illuminator this? sort of vibe. We had the the Baron skin that was mm -hmm. kind of like this. Yeah, looks like Kronos is uh, is doing much of the same stuff. Let's take a listen to the voice back here for Kronos. What up? Everything is a matter of perception. Even time will bend when seen from a new angle. Sorry if I seem blue. I spill paint all over myself. <laughs> Your mind is an empty husk. I will fill with light. Thank you. Bro, why does his face look fucking horrible? <laughs> I don't know if that was supposed that's to a, be nice or not. That's a compliment. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've heard the phrase empty husk with, when describing my name before, so not the first time. Autos are a okay. humanoid Kronos, it, I mean, he's already he's already very human-like, you know, most of the time, but it's more mechanical. Mm -hmm. This this has actually got normal human skin, I believe, for the first time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, There's so I also much shit really going love, on his back. I, we've Why? had a lot of good wings on this patch. Like, for what uh, yeah. These are some of my favorites. Uh, also, just uh, they have like Does a, a really the cool volume? materiality. That's fucking loud as shit. They effects really nicely. Yeah, these effects. You guys are can great. hear me, right? It makes I'm so, so much good. sense for Kronos, the this sort of thing, and and his staff is the is paint. the paintbrush. There's too much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's, really cool. the, it's like but a, uh, still maintaining like a three or that four. curve that Kronos' staff this normally This is a three or four. We can't go lower than that because it's not with, complete with shit. The, the colors, only abilities are fine. Time. The autos look okay. Yeah, yeah. I think these illuminators kind of weave the cosmos. You got three or four. Tina coming in with the one. We're going like a three. Hey, that's what we need here on the update show, as always. We'll let you guys know that some elements are still working. I like the colors of the effect. Like Haiti skin, so but I don't like the gold. To be finished up when you so play test on PTS or of course his face looks like shit. Live and there's like a million the different fucking things going on on his back. The, the staff Why? alone totally selling me on this. Yeah, game. I can't get over that ult either. The I love staff the alone is cool. Just, yeah. If it was it just really the staffs, yeah. the, the colors would be sick. Are just perfect you just played it as a staff. Three as well definitely definitely stood out. Basically, every ability was perfect. Uh, by the skin. Okay, next up. Lost Soul King Arthur. I'm giving that a four. King Arthur, an arrogant hero that has started to become Fuck Arthur, dude. ancient power. I hate Arthur. I mean, in his defense. Why is it? Why is Arthur brand like this, new and have eight fucking skins? hard to not be arrogant, right? Yeah. This, yeah. this is... Uh, I relate so much. Right, yeah. yeah, Chris, that's why I was looking at you. Yeah. Honestly. I thought that, you know, I know you, have, you often struggle with combating these ancient powers that might corrupt you. But it's hard. You've been able to do a great job. Unfortunately for Lost Soul, King Arthur, it's he has get not been yeah. quite as successful <laughs> as you. Definitely looking a little, I mean, King Arthur normally has got all this huge armor. Seems like a little bit stripped down here, but still has a lot of it, but a little bit more uh, just doing it by himself because mm -hmm. he's a beast apparently. Let's take a listen to the voice pack for Lost Soul, King Arthur. Where will today lead me? What places will I see? Whose blood will I spill? You want to see a magic trick? Fine. I'll make your head disappear. Oh. My sword will cleave your body. My magic will raise your soul. He's got to do it to like raise up or like. Yeah, I guess so. That's nice. Get you a man who can do both. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's, what, that's what they always say. He's got the he's got the magic book on his hip too. He's kind of mm. he's kind of ready to go. This is a fave of mine, but I'm pretty biased. I, <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, like definitely a King Arthur skin, um, though. And there are a lot of really cool lore elements tied into this guy. The colors on the um, abilities the are cool. He's using the this sword armor looks fucking to cool. stop the corruption from the sword. This cloak and fucking armor look like shit. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah, a uh, lot of lot of really cool stuff we came up with. Um, I'm giving it a six. The effects. These are my first time seeing the, the effects. The effects are so cool. If the skin oh, wow. like looks cool, color scheme. You yeah, yeah, really in is. any way, I'd give it like eight or nine. on the ground is, as he's spinning. I like the sword a lot. And, and the sword's still massive, but it feels like a, a little, slightly bit smaller it's, than some of his other things. It's clean. Things, and I think the that magic sword effects really do a great fuck. job of conveying that he still has the same hit area. Mm -hmm. It's just with a little bit of magical prowess. Yeah, definitely want him to feel a little bit more agile. Like the armor is a little sleeker. Yeah. Um, ah, he heard, heard me, yeah. dude. Yeah, it works really well. Feel. I like the way the sword. High res production is listening. Like, like, really say sleek, say yeah. sleek. Yeah. yeah. Weakens said sleek. A lot of tweaking on that for sure, but I think we got it to a really good place. Yeah, that blade. I say six and a half. Just 
awesome. Six and a half. So I cool. really like the sword and the ability. Definitely a god. With, when you get into that flow state, it's it's so fun to just go through the team fight. And I feel like this skin in particular is going to really lend itself to that same feeling. And then last but certainly not least, Toxic Current Yamoja, the newest skin for the newest god. Okay. The most they needed a skin. Is badass, they definitely dude. needed a skin. That for is this. so cool. The whole team wants to work on a Yamoja skin. Everybody's like itching to do it because she's such a cool goddess. Yeah, yeah, really, really cool. And plenty, and plenty to do, I'm sure, with the with the bouncing of the water and that kind of Toxic? stuff. Toxic. So, yeah, this is for me. Gold. What the <laughs> fuck? I'm a sucker for green. It's my favorite color. That this definitely knocks out of the park. Yeah. Let's take a listen to the voice pack here for Toxic Current Yamoja. Looks like Caustic, One a female version. One and here I am, cleaning up my messes. Might as well put my powers to good use. Did you uh, hear that carbon and oxygen broke up? Turns out the relationship was toxic. Does the skin look <laughs> like low detail? Like, you know, it, it's almost like we're playing the game on like right medium graphics. Place. Does that's it look a good like, way to like, get my voice out. I just have to get the like face her, Like her yeah, clothing. Exactly. Okay, that looks better. Why does that look so much better <laughs> for Yamoja. than what we just uh, saw? A little bit of backstory lore, as I hope you all love It looks fine video. now. It uh, looked like shit Yamoja, in that video or whatever the fuck that was. Who was studying Meltdown okay. Soul. Soul escaped and in the process it infected slash corrupted Yamoja. Oh, I like Truly. this. Truly unlucky. I like but this. <laughs> but you get this cool color scheme and you get the... All right, this is cool. Toxicity all the time. Yeah, so. this acid green color, really, really striking on this skin. That's what the old looks um, like. And I, I love how the hair turned out so much, like tying that in. Yeah, yeah. the hair looks amazing. Oh, oh she my god, oh, yeah, that's no. beefy. Oh, that is I like so that. Cool. That, that is a lot so of work better into than that, that water one. And I'm very fuck. proud of it. Dude, that, is, <laughs> that thing no, is that really is so good. Cool. <laughs> yeah, that is, that is way better than base. I'm gonna say it. Thanks, I did both, but that's okay. You know, it's cool. Hey man, that we're just talking about toxic current Yamoja, <laughs> and it's working for us for sure. The the lights on the ramp too, yeah. like, letting you know this is the way we're going. <laughs> yeah, that that is excellent. I have been trolled an awful lot with that ability, it's, and now I won't have an excuse. It's the only reason I ever play Yamoja <laughs> is just to yeah be that guy. It is very funny and very worth it, and also a very cool ability that I'm glad it is the way it is. <laughs> And I'm, I'm not even mad every time I get trolled. I'm like, well, that's fair. Yeah, the, the, the ramps have little arrows. A distance indicator on her three to show when it's mm -hmm. going to send people back and when it's going to send them forward is now much more clear across ah, the skins is. as well. Base will have this orange coloring as well, so it's, there should be no confusion. Excellent. Oh, nice. Yeah. You're speaking my language when it comes to FX targeters. Yeah, Chris. I know you love them. Yeah, I, <laughs> I sure do. That is, that's what I'm all about. Yeah, that it's just way easier to see. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> that is so sick. sick. The floor texture is just awesome. I know there's like uh, some bones floating around in that, oh, there in is. that toxic sludge. All kinds of. Yeah, really I think I saw some things. signs in there. <laughs> <laughs> All kinds of fun little Easter eggs in there. I mean, you never know what's going to be inside toxic sludge. Oh, yeah, I see a sign over there. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Man, I feel like. You know, we, we do these god reveals. We're going to do one for Heimdall right after this. And something insane is going to be in the skin. And I'm going to be like, that is super cool. And I have no idea how we're ever going to turn that into a skin. <laughs> right. And then you guys, like, make toxic sludge that skin waves. skin was and good. Everything is perfect. And it wasn't I, I insane, know, I, I but it was good. I, like, it was... Thank you guys very much, of course, for joining us here. It was eight and a half, probably. Right on Nine, the other maybe. side. We're going to be going over eight and a half. There's no wow factor, but it was good. Solid nine. Eight and a half or nine. A good skin it was a really good skin and here we go boys top two skins the vulcan one and that one what the fuck Is he gonna blow his horn and for an alt or some shit? Wait, 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 wait. Wait, the auto attack with that? The sword too? Why is he have two handed axes, swords, fucking horns and shit? Why are there Pokemon in there? Oh my 
my god, dude. This this better be able to be played in the jungle. Well, it better be like at least on her level in the jungle. <laughs> Heimdall. Do you really think you can stop me? That's why I'm here. Time for Heimdall to join the realm of Smite. To go over it, we've got Pon Pon, we've got Nick, lead gameplay programmer, and of course, AJ with the Amaterasu hoodie. Glad to see it survive the the, invade, the Viking invasion. Yeah, I got it back safely. I was Safe and sound. I, I was nervous. Got a lot of use at HRX too. Had to double wash it. Of course, yeah. That's the way it's got to be. Uh, guys, Heimdall, a god that has been asked for in Smite for a very, no, I never very watched long that at time. HRX. What, what made us feel like this is the right time to put him in, and what were some of the key things we wanted to hit with his lore? I mean, I think the big thing here is is he's just a character that's going to fill the role that we've been looking for. People have really been wanting a physical hunter, and he has a really unique hook that we can kind of like lay into to actually make him this unique hunter as a whole. Um, his lore in general is there's not much actually known about him. He's kind of has very few texts writing about him. Uh, the one passage that might tell you that he's a, a Vanir or an Asir is is unclear. He might be part of Yggdrasil. He might be born from it. Um, he might have a part buried underneath Yggdrasil. There's a lot unknown. I think they're talking we do about all the run and shit, Mama. Very good vision. He he has very good hearing. He can like hear grass growing from a hundred miles away. He hears all the conversations happening um, throughout the realm. Bro, somebody I can um, hear a gank and coming. He's strong and vigilant. He watches over the Bifrost and he's learned its secrets over the the millennia that he's been watching it. He's definitely the the vigilant is definitely the right yes. sort of. I mean, that's a lot of responsibility when you can hear every conversation happening. You've got to you've got to be able to pay attention, and certainly he's able to do that. I mean, I know people were surprised but i think excited when when it was revealed that he was a hunter but the the use of his legendary items is, is definitely a big key for us as well yeah these legendary items are very key to his lore his sword is is a named sword the gallahorn is the horn that's blown to actually signal the beginning of ragnarok the biggest event in, in kind of norse mythology um and the bifrost as a whole there's a lot of unknowns about it um its power its reach what it can and can't do and so we were able to explore all that in his kit which is really fun Absolutely. We do have the card art for you here as we get ready to go in-game very soon with Heimdall. This guy must have said something messed up, and you already know he heard it, you know? He, he <laughs> must have approached the Bifrost. Don't do that. You cannot be doing that. Don't do that. He takes combat very seriously, but he's also, like, a, a very reliable ally. One of his key lore points, he's known for having the best mead in all of, the Norse, of all the Norse gods, so people are happy to join him for a drink, and he would be kind to you. But when it comes time to fight... He's very serious, he's very dutiful, so if you try to cross that bridge without permission, you're gonna get the ax. Yeah, it, you think like Rainbow Bridge, nice and inviting, it's gonna be cool, you gotta, you gotta make sure you got the right permits. Yeah, yeah. that's the doorway to the gods. You can't just waltz through there. No, you sure cannot. We can, however, waltz right into the game and take a look at Heimdall's kit. Let, with Ooh, Pompon skinny. here, clumsy at the helm, I do believe. Uh, let's just let him go, go kind of wild yeah. and see what we got here. Let's uh, let's see what each of his abilities do. Are we back yeah. in? I'm sure he's oh, setting one up right here, right now. Oh okay. yeah, what's that? That's weird. Oh, okay. that's a sword. And eyes over there. Okay. Oh, high sword. What the oh. fuck? <laughs> this is very different looking from when I played it last. I'm yes. also confused in a very good way. What just happened? These these abilities, their animations. Are what? Oh my lord. Goodbye. Yeah, where'd he go? Later, bro. He's good. He's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Don't worry about it. He just went through on a, on a little trip. We'll talk about that later. <laughs> no, that what sick. just happened? The, the uppercut Hello? animation. I'm here for what? it, man. That was awesome. Okay. All right, we'll get to that he a little does, bit. What? Uh, bro, this game, this dude's getting a baseball skin at some point. Before we even get into the passive or his abilities, is that his auto attacks work very differently than any hunter we've done in the past. Uh, oh, you want to start with those, Pond? Yeah, exactly. So the big thing here for him is most hunters have a 1-1 chain uh, where basically if they have one attack speed, they'll fire shot every second. It'll do 100% damage. Heimdaller has none of that. He has, th he has a hit chain of AAB, and the first two swings are at 1.3 speed, so they come out much slower, but they also hit at 130% of your basic attack power. Uh, the final one is an overhead hit, 
which uh, does 150% damage at 1.5 speed. So you can see he's level 20. He's throwing these attacks out much slower than you'd expect a standard hunter to. Yeah. And the other thing you can notice is these first two, the, the 130 ones or the 1.3 attack speed ones, they're cleaving. So you can see that that Odin is being hit for Bro, about Bro, you're going to be able to auto attack the damage total for on, so fucking much. Hits. So you have like two cleaving attacks to so these max throws into a very heavy hitting single target attack. Cleave jungle! So the, so when we talk about low attack speed hunters, we think of like, like Hoji, who's, who's yeah. got one of the lowest in the class. Heimdall, far below even Hoji. So his base stat is actually similar to other hunters in regards to the attacks we do have, oh, but okay. it takes 1.3 seconds. I'll see you guys on the PTS uh, to tonight if it's available. So you can, I can't wait. So, you have to do a little bit of math to figure out how long, how fast they actually come out. But essentially, he's just attacking what thirty percent slower on average, sure. and his final attack is gonna be fifty percent right, slower. Show me these crazy ass abilities, dude. But he's hitting that. Ex it's, it's a one to one conversion of this much longer to this much more power. Correct. So, so attack speed is not generally the best word to use, but it's actually animation time. Yes. His mm -hmm. abilities take longer animations on each throw, but their power scaling is higher. So yes, Heimdall is essentially like mini critting on every single throw. Yeah. That is sweet. I'm here for it. Okay, let's start off with the passive then, shall we? The Vigilant. Uh, of course, with his eyesight being so good, that seems like a natural direction to go with the passive. Correct. What? And so that's what we wanted to focus on. We want to, and you'll see this side of the kit, we want to bring Vigilant as a power? theme. It's not something you can build a whole kit around on its own, Wait, but it's a nice thing it's to actually kind strikes of bring off as a whole. And so basically, whenever Heimdall has Vigilant on no one for build? any reason, if they leave that vision range, uh, he just gets to continue seeing them for four seconds. So they walk over a ward and they leave that ward range. Uh, he'll continue revealing them for four seconds to himself. Mm -hmm. He can continue to see that. And for everyone he has visit vision on, he gets additional uh, physical power scaling, 3% per stack. So he wants vision on as many people as he can get, and that increases his power overall. And I know, Nick, we had a, we actually had to like do a whole bunch of stuff to get vision working, because that's not something we ever really like mess around with like on vision loss. Yeah, like the trick here is like the passive gives him vision, <sighs> but he gains those stacks of passive when he loses vision. So it's kind of like this chicken and egg question of like, when he loses his pass passive vision, does he gain another stack? No, we sure. have to like really code up like some interesting solutions Bro. here of making sure that- So you'll be like, able to get he fucking- pretty, pretty much has eyes on everybody on 15% more physical sure. power I, if you I just see people. I already have a buff for Heimdall. Um, <laughs> so if you're you late game, it's gonna be a four power. Characters, Cause I'm gonna have my Heimdall ping where everyone's going at all times. You're just gonna right, can't can't get another, everybody another that well, but yeah, he can. No he does get a, a bit of advantage. Hello? And we actually have that mixed into a couple different abilities here, a couple different various tweaks on the vision mechanic. Cause we know I read that, that right though. The His crits are 70 reduced by 70% or are only reduced by 30%, right? That he's got something special with crit critical strike. Yeah, so so this is kind of just the the more balanced technical talk. Tone down his fucking scaling, scaling autos or his is just higher hitting and autos, I break everything. <laughs> um, and so we had a caveat where he actually only gets 70% bonus damage on critical strikes. Okay. Um, the way the math kind of works out, essentially, crit is still very good on him. You can go crit build. It's it ends up being successful. even because um, of his He actually does scale a bit in terms of like raw DPS potential with crit a little bit higher than other hunters. But it's not as as crazy as it could be because again, critting on 150% scaling basic attack. Yeah, I, that's what I was thinking, bro. Bit, if he crit with a, his a third bit, like, auto, go above a thousand. Especially you go throw a Deathbringer Oof. in there, yeah, yeah. we'd be really having yeah, I mean, having a bad time. Think like Naja last hit of attack chain crits, yeah. right? right? We're talking four digits pretty yeah. easily. All right, we're gonna go through the abilities now. We're gonna start with, of course, number one, which is Piercing Sight. I know okay, I asked you how go. to pronounce this sword earlier, Pon Pon, and I have completely forgotten. I'm gonna go with. Hofuth? Yes. Did That's, I get it? I mean, th there's, a, it's a, it's really technical to get it fully right. You're, you're close enough. All right, thank you. That's Hofuth? Awesome. Yes. And so this sword is the sword of Heimdall, uh, translates to the head of Heimdall. Um, and we wanted to bring a sword ability in the game that felt a bit unique, different than other sword abilities that we have. And for a vision god, it feels like a, he could use his sword to actually augment his vision. So what he does is he takes the sword and throws it into the sky. And when it's thrown into the sky, you can see that whole circle is his reveal range. And he can actually, he oh, wow. reveals Damn. to himself anyone caught in that range. And he can keep it up there for 10 seconds. You can see it's up there for a long time. Yeah. And then at any point after it's been thrown in the air, he can select a ground location and you'll see it actually pivots and turns and comes crashing down onto that target location. So, is it all, these enemies would only be revealed to him? I wonder what the numbers are on that. Correct. Okay. So he he's level them, 20 and it's heading for 180. That means it's scaling must be decent, right? To see for four more seconds. 
Um, Unless it's but yeah, just for the vision. This is his ability to, hey, maybe I go check Fire Giant. Maybe instead of just walking and face checking it, I can throw this well, sword that is and get some crazy. ahead of time. And then plan accordingly if I want to bring the sword down on anyone or just leave it as Steel Goal of Fury with that shit. Ward for 10 seconds, essentially. Very, yeah, definitely a very strong ability in, in, the, in the higher levels of gameplay for sure. Excited to see the ramifications there. Now, if it's you, looking like if a jungler, you, boys. Eventually, will it just go wherever your targeter is whenever the time expires? Nope. So it will fade. It'll okay. just kind of blip out if you choose not to use it. Uh, but the thing here is that you can notice there's no other casting range indicator on this ability. So if you were to do something like uh, maybe do what Clumsy did at the start, which was was kind of warp to the middle of the lane, and you placed it in your base, you it'll go it anywhere went as far as you could go. So as far uh, as you can move, in bro, that 10 throw it up in the vase, go through a Janus portal, wherever you want. So fucking drop it on somebody on the other the side map, of the map, GG. You? you can throw a sword from across the map. Wait, when does the timer start? Zoom across, and you'll see everything. I can hear the, the cooldown timer turning, doesn't start until it hits. I guess arena videos. Oh yeah, we don't know. These infinite cooldown fuck. Shots that they do. Yeah, when's the cooldown start? One of them at Worlds. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna have some fun with this one. It seems this, like. this character just has a lot of very interesting applications for his abilities. That's kind of the main goal of making this hunter that feels a little different here. So this ability is honestly in a lot of its best applications. It's being used to scout Gold Fury, Fire Giant. Um, it's being used to scout over walls and check things. Mm -hmm. It's also doubles as a ranged poke attack. Sure. But the, its shape and size doesn't allow it to easily clear wave. It's only going to hit about half the minions. And honestly, it's uh, its damage ramping is a little on the low end for maybe a normal hunter ranged attack. Yeah, once he gets his scaling going, his passive going, it can hurt a, lit, a lot. But other standard range poke that you have in lane is a little bit lower. Sure. Okay. Let's move on to another legendary item that Heimdall is known for, of course, the Gallerhorn. Uh, this we saw a little bit of whenever Clumsy was running through the kit. Mm -hmm. This was one of the, the abilities that I had the most fun lose using whenever I had a chance movement? to play Heimdall uh, like, a couple weeks ago. It just, like lose it completely it, or It feels reduced? right to, to be blowing this giant horn as Heimdall. Yeah, it's, it's the iconic weapon. It's the, the, thing, the thing that blows to signal the oh, start sick. of Ragnarok. Um, and so we want to make sure that we had that power behind it. So you can see it has like a really meaty sound effect to it. Um, and basically anyone who's caught in that initial cone is is so disoriented from the blast that their movement speed and attack speed are actually being reduced. Uh, how and while much? he's channeling this, he has the immunity as well as some protections so that he can actually get in forward because he wants to walk towards his enemy. He wants to be close to his enemy because when it finishes or when he cancels it on his own, he actually unleashes a final blow. It, he kind of has this rising note that happens oh, and knocks shit. people away. What so the you can, fuck? You can the slow people, get close into melee range, knock them up fall up with other attacks or if someone's just it's interesting you, it's not you crazy really quick blast to knock them away from you to get some extra safety gotcha okay so it's it his main that's dope. defensive tool you can instant cancel it for a knockback can be used pretty offensively yeah so if you're in the middle of a team fight and you're trying to chase someone you can slow them down a little bit so you can get in range the range is if pretty close jumped, though you can knock them back um if you want to play it eh, more never mind it's got some distance on it i lied forward, it, it is pretty close i don't know um a lot of flexible applications here to this ability yeah, I mean, it's huge. It doesn't I mean, do very much in that cone, though. It's sticking like for 24. With this ability, so an AoE slow, certainly not something that... It's probably you know, doing, like, for how long. 150 base or some shit uh, like that. All right, I think it's time we move on to the Bifrost, because this is one that I'm sure... <laughs> We're going to spend some time on what yes. everyone's been waiting for. Yeah, this yeah. is one of my personal favorites. The, yeah. the, the, definitely the one that required the most technical work. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe this just going to be bugged. Yeah, There's no way fun. this yeah. doesn't bug out. The ultimate probably took a bit more, but this one has a lot going to it. So the Bifrost. This, this ability has some interesting things going on, but first is you place a location on the map. So you'll place one fragment. Then when you place a second fragment, so one's already been placed on the map, but when you place a second one, you can see the colors changed. They become linked. And when this crystal is open, it's active. Heimdall can use it to teleport between the two locations. And when you walk into it, you'll see the crystal close around you and you'll go. Now that's only the first part of it. The second part <laughs> is this doesn't have a range limit. You can use this globally. Uh -huh. But the way we balance this ability is the, the further this. away they are, when you use it, the longer it takes to close around Heimdall and the longer it goes on cooldown. At rank one, if you use this to go from base to, from lane to base, um, it will actually be 210 seconds cooldown. Oh use, my god! <laughs> or if you use it as just a short hop in lane, more like a traditional movement ability, it's going to be more on a traditional movement cooldown. So you can see, because he's ranked it up, it's only 50 seconds here. But you can see the cooldown oh scales and how long fuck. it takes to actually travel and start traveling cooldown. changes based on the distance. So the cooldown was fun to write because the cooldown's listed as variable. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm sure that was that was. And this is the arena map. For sure. So not God. only does your time 
that you have to wait until the crystal's active, which you can see on the passive meter. Correct. But also the cooldown of the ability is longer. So based you can, on how far you travel. So you can place fragments whenever you want. Oh, it's okay. the there only... is no cooldown really on placing the fragments. Yes. It's all about the traveling. You can re you can reposition uh, uh, reposition them all you'd like. Gotcha. And that's what the the colors are there to help that's you remember weird. which one you're going I'm trying to, to think of all the next. like it it there's any crazy shit forth. you can it's do with it. Of a reminder to yeah, help okay. you make sure you understand which one you're switching. Um, and you can see that, that that's probably like one of the coolest tech things we've done in Tars of the material is that that effect where yeah, it was opening up. Yeah, there's a lot that went into that Nick. Yeah, the, the technical effects here, like Andrew and Mike really killed it with like these rainbow effects. I, I really love this like rainbow haze around the crystals and this warbling effect before it explodes. Like it's it's also magical. It's so good because when I play tested this, it was it was very very early on, and it was just like Giannis portal that you. I was like, I don't know when I'm gonna be able to do this, and I don't know how you really convey this to me when I'm actually able to do it. But just perfect. I mean, it's so clear on when I can use this and when I can't. And this is only for Heimdall, correct? Correct. Yeah. Only Heimdall can take this. Right. So no one else has permission to go on the Bifrost. Makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. No one else can. You can't. Even um, if you're a god, you can't just be stepping into it. So this ability has a lot of unique applications. You know, of course, you can kind of use it as a, a Jingwei or a Chernavog uh, return to lane, but that's going to have a really, really long cooldown if you do it. And if you do that, you're going to essentially present, prevent yourself from having an ability. Yeah. So he has no movement ability for a really long time. At all. Sure. Yeah. In many cases, that could actually be a trap. In many cases, it can be strategically smart. Um, you can also use it to rotate between lanes very Bro. quickly. Mm -hmm. So if you go and drop this in your mid lane, the opposing As mid laner will have to be though? worried about the threat. Of if I leave this like in the mid, up. in yeah, the mid lane, and then whenever I get in just, trouble, just I drop it and, and jump in it real quick. But uh, really, you get into a very interesting skill expression through this ability. Or I leave it on their speed it in buff? combat and using it in closer ranges. You know, it's, uh, it's a, a good way to use this ability to actually drop it. Can I go my speed, get it to his speed, invade? Right. Un unplaced. Oh my or, you know, god, you can every myself, speed is mine. It. So if you get jumped, you drop it on yourself, step into it, and port yourself out really quick. They're How all long, mine, let's boys. Let's say I'm pushed to the enemy tower line, and my portal is, is next to my own tier 1 tower. So one whole lane. <laughs> yeah. Do a yeah, lane lane. How, how long channel time do I have to stand in the portal? I would guess, knowing the size of that, probably about <laughs> 1. 1.2 to 1.5 seconds. I think I'm joking, but I'm still not. In it. We and actually had one playtest where uh, Bacchus ulted me, and I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be out of here, no problem. And I like had to let go of the keyboard because I was just- Yeah, I wanna see this all, bro. I tremble walked out of it, and they killed me. I was like, oh no, yeah. that actually took too long. Knockups and trembles and pushes and pulls can pull him out of his uh, teleport area, so they're a very good way. Knockups got like Bacchus- This guy's gonna be to weird to though, dude, because he, cause he doesn't have a lot of damage flopping, outside of his autos. Gotcha. It knocks him out of the area. Um, if he's it looks like he has no through. early yes. game. Okay. So it's also it's really At fun all. at Heimdall to just stand in your thing, just fighting and fighting to the death, hoping that someone is going to die. But his cleaves might be insane. Before, before you die. Um, I want to play so this shit, really, dude. Once you get the hang of the cooldown and get actually the ability to use this in combat. His one at level 20 is hitting yeah, for 180, practice, right? I mean, even after I guess he has no pen or anything. A little rusty at it. Um, it's probably being hang, mitigated by a fucking really cool things. You can able to evacuate Heimdall out of combat scenarios. If you prepare properly, you can yes. really make some really cool power plays. Bro, I'm invading kind of rescue, with that fucking rescue yourself. That two, yeah. uh, three. Feels uh, like, I mean, as w with it max rank, ooh, baby, an, an 18 second cooldown to go as far as we're going. <laughs> wait, is really not that wait, 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 wait. traditional dash. At level really, one, really, I can put a crystal really good, at my speed in and I can game, invade be, I their speed. Cognizant of where you're using. That short distance just there was 14 seconds. You know, yeah. so it is. It is. And you can out. use it like that. But you can also use it in all these other ways. Sure. Yes. And speaking of other ways, this ability has one more feature. Yeah, we triple down on the vigilance theme here, and the beam between the two uh, fragments. Bro, I'm about to invade like a motherfucker. No acts way. Acts as a tripwire. Yeah. Oh, here we and go, so boys. So it reveals enemies to Heimdall specifically for the brief time that they're crossing over it. But it does, does that trigger his passive as well? Mm -hmm. Yes, it does. So they get extended a little bit of vision yes. too. Dude, that is so cool. So you can also use these more in the jungle along the duo lane ah. to kind of keep your lane warded as well as have a path for you to escape or aggress. Ah. Yeah, so there's a, this, this, it's gonna be really interesting to see how players actually use this and like the amount of skill expression with this ability is so high. It's a hard to use ability. Wouldn't it's be straight a pom -pom up hard. God if there wasn't something really hard about it, you know? <laughs> no. It just wouldn't fit. I mean, the one and the two. But yeah, does this guy have I mean, any clear take some at all? The, like the right for a lane, for an ADC? Because it's a bit of a, a slow warm up. How the fuck does he clear? Sure. The real key with Other the than two his cleave, his cleave might be enough. Perfect max range. But like that one is only going to hit either melees or archers. And you can just or put people at max archers. range and do a pretty good job harassing and damaging a lot of people. Mm -hmm. 
You get yeah, you're gonna have to rely actually. on the three. The three two doesn't do any damage. I don't think. There to figure out exactly what's the best. <laughs> I want to see the numbers. It. I guess. Oh, but cleaving isn't Time enough. Ultimate, if you sure cleave, what will happens will when the support walks in front of your autos? And that they've broken the character, and then they and then realize clear. that they're down in ability for 250 yeah, seconds, and, and they just get ganks them and killed. Just die. <laughs> it's it is actively against your best interest to do that. This too two is sticking for 24 like six times or five times. It doesn't reset or at max range. It keeps sticking down. Okay, so it doesn't just reset on death. Uh, all right, I can't believe we've gone this long without going over the ultimate because yeah, as cool as all this, this is, I think the ultimate is, is probably the coolest part. Yeah. Go so ahead, through the realms, Five, this, is, ten. this was actually the the, the wall part of the hit we damage had the, we had to just get very early prototyping, get everyone on board because four seconds this of travel time, team, which we what? normally don't involve the environment team in like god design necessarily. Yeah, that's your like CC, your CC yeah. for yes, four correct. seconds. So this ability, you charge forward and you stun the first god that you hit. If you hit a god, they'll be stunned as well, and Heimdall will uh, like wind up a really, really heavy accent and just launch them into the sky. And you can see they've gone through. Yeah, you're gone for four seconds. Anymore. And they're they're gonna come back and and you can hit them. So you you just remove them from the match, launch them into the sky. They go Bro, through. Bro, you eat them for four about three seconds. seconds. Later, they're going to return on that ground spot that's marked through that blue portal. Um, but that's not all. What's the scaling now, where on do that? they go? They yeah, actually go. Where to, do they go? Yeah, they go to Muspelheim and Niflheim. So they actually are currently, while they're out of the map, they're being burned by the fires of Muspelheim and chilled by the cold winds of Niflheim. And they will experience that as a full 3D environment that they fly through. Okay. I want to so see it from the other point of view. On this arena map, by the way. No, well, this is the. Wait, uh, can he eat himself? Earlier this year, yeah. it's been it's been like this. Oh. Maybe I'm not running in this area very much. Yeah. Yep, I think we're ready, ready? to show it. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> so getting hitting someone is fun, but getting hit is almost cooler. Oh no! We broke it. How did you break it? No, we broke it. Okay. Ah. We expected this might happen with having too many Heimdalls and firing the ultimate many times in short succession. We might ah. have to re we might have to reload the map real quick. Yes, yeah, so we might. We'll have make to sure we can see it. Yeah, let's uh, we we what can go ahead and do fuck? that. I want to see it, dude. So we we'll make sure we get to see that you. before I, I we go. Bro, what's the scaling? Way to do it, uh, for, that all has to do like 1500 damage. If you just head to jungle practice and and pick Heimdall, that should resolve the issue. You should be able to see it. Okay. Um, obviously, this has a lot of technical things going on. Yes. And PTS is also going to be a few issues. Can that we're you beads the wind up? We want to show you as much best as we can the full realized version of this ability. I've been hit by this alt multiple times in full scale conquest play. I want to know if you can beads the wind up. Specific visuals there. Like when he hits you and then he's doing the class right so, yeah. you uh, might be okay yeah. that'll be weird that's probably what happened that'll be yeah. interesting yeah. loading and unloading that environment but they eat some supports and fucking yes. soul lanes yeah. 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 all the time why can't we just switch between soul lane at the like, speed bump lobby and jungle practice that's gone yeah. 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 fuck away from my speed bump a little bit complete architecture to load support invaded my speed bump ultimate is really amazing it's really cool it's got a few interesting aspects besides just mamba's visuals, near me as a uh, kind of banish ultimate mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it also has now i'm one shotting somebody with that all in that it's a it semi randomizes the re-entry location yes mm. so you, they do not return to the exact spot they were before in the arena where it's a little bit open is self peel is okay it's good conquest, but he has no mobility of his so portal so you be, like uh, if you're more careful oof, and more vigilant i don't know you have to be really good with those crystals to find where that character is going to return to make sure you can finish off the final damage if they don't die from the ultimate itself but there is is a, a, a landing location cool. targeter mm -hmm. correct from the very beginning right. right yes okay so you just have to so you have time to go bit. to go find that oh sure. so they will they have to do a baseball like, skin like a what is it, like 60 degree angle 75 degree angle. yeah it's like i think it's 60 degree angle cone about 60 feet um, okay. in front of you anywhere in that range they can fall but if that happens to be over a wall they might be over a wall you might have to go hunt them down throw up your throw up your store and start looking no it's like asap sure. please that'll, that'll and we, when we were designing sure. heimdall we were trying to think of the things that are that fit with him thematically. The vigilance, obviously, we used his artifacts, Not, his fire frost, his weapons. And his stuff. shit will be good but for spectator. Also, just the concept of the travel between the Norse realms and these nine worlds of Norse mythology. It's just a really cool yeah. mythological uh, story point. All of yeah. these different worlds and how they're interconnected in Norse mythology. And we've always wanted to do some sort of like banish you to the shadow yeah. realm, new environment type of thing Bruh. for a god kit. So th we found out that this Bruh. just fit really well on this guy this god morrigan now we can home run bat people out of the map and some yeah, kind, kind of cc and a joust let's game see if we, if we see if we've got and you just eat two people off the map and you there three one yeah, the other guy is. holy shit and you can see there's a lot of camera stuff going on there it's panning there's actually like an fov effect that's happening there there's okay. just a lot of tech that went into making this look the way that it does that and is present sick. the way that it does and 
I mean, this Holy took shit. the whole team coming together to actually get this to work the way that it does. Yeah, and we like, got a whole big piece of new technology here because we are we have this whole separate environment. <laughs> the Bro, that's game. awesome. And, you know, this that's not a cheap memory cost for us. No, we have a whole separate map. Oh, clumsy's. Uh, you can actually rotate. Yeah, the you can home run it. bat hit oh, after like a successful hit. You can rotate it to the direction of your choice. Yeah, if you want to bat him, it's a so fight. Find that sweet spot. You can send yeah. them off to wherever so, you want. That's I, I will say, uh, you know, a lot of times. <laughs> was it the he does no 500 base at max rank, you know, 200 when he hits a wall, and like 50 you know, when he hits something else. Like, hey, we're doing this so I think the ult at what, base with no scaling does like 700 damage. I feel like every single time. Probably, like, probably, close, probably like 750. Ult in the game. We want more Naja alts, everything like that. And every time it's like. That'd be cool if we could do it for every god, but it's just so difficult to, to execute properly and, and tech wise. See, this yeah, is what, the it was, area. I oh think, shit, he to took 110 pull twice. Pull out the stops and, yeah. and really. So he hit two walls. And the execution lo looks So that was actually closer to like 8 to 900 to damage that. from his ult. Traveling through with these no realms scaling. of fire and ice. Yeah. And so instead of just taking damage right up front, they apply like a fire uh, burn and an ice slow to you. And actually, when you return to the map you were on, you're still burning and slowed oh, from cool. your trip. Yeah. So you actually have something a little souvenir to take with you from from Muspelheim <laughs> and Niflheim. Yeah, it takes Bro, a little bit to recover. People are gonna that, get that fucked kind of because you're gonna ult no, somebody off the map and they're just gonna stand there I'm waiting for them to come back for four seconds and get killed. When I ult them, can I then set up my attack chain to big auto them perfectly yes. in that time? You so so the the play is probably to ult, throw your sword up. Get to the final hit of the hit chain. Throw the final hit of the hit chain so that it's going to land right when they actually land. Do the so the horn knockback into another basic attack into the sword crashing down. If you can get all that set up for free and no one's going to stop you, it's a lot of damage. Yeah, you're gonna kill people yes. for sure. It's risky though, right? This is a yes. this is a forward yeah, you're charge, staying, you're staying which is something along with his like slightly tankier stats. And the idea that he might be able to throw Bro, see me in the jungle. Role. This ultimate at the fire giant one v one. It's good. At, it's really good at picking uh, you someone. You get needed, boys. Um, it can be beads during the warm up by enemies. Very easily. I might right. Have. There's a relatively long oh, time. Oh, so you can beads. beads. Yeah. Um, you can beads that at any point. All right. Emergency. There, like not any point when he's in there, but any point before he gets yes. he might see gets in trouble. They might use it in that way. So it can be used in that way as well. Interesting. Yeah, I, I think that it's one of the larger windows I, for one of the. What is this guy's you know, base Kukana stats? Is he tanky like, like Wolf? Has a small window, but until he actually connects with that axe, you have. Watch all his bait. Watch him be like as tanky there as Wolf at level one. Damage up front though for just correct. Correct. Yeah, so just connecting it does a lot of damage. He we is? did that because we knew that we want to have a larger beat. I'm jungling this shit. Let's go, boys. So long. See me. So it hits. See me tonight on PTS. Um, but the fall damage when you succeed is is nothing to to laugh at either. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things stood out to me back then, you can correct me if it's changed since then, is that he's got pretty solid scaling on, on basically every ability. Maybe the one was a little bit lower, but the two had pretty high scaling. And Bro, the ultimate well, did. Yeah, so he, he no, has relatively screen, high scaling. Um, the two has it mostly because it's a channel. Channels tend to have higher scaling because sure. you have to be, uh, especially as a hunter, right? You're, you're sacrificing basic attacks. Yeah. Um, the one got a bit more scaling over development as a whole. Um, he does work really well with power as well as that passive scales with it. He works well with the traditional hunter build. And we've also seen some experimentation with people flexing. Does cooldown like affect the three when you do a long port? tries to go in uh, and be a bit more disruptive. It must. Um, and we'll see what it doesn't, that's stupid. to do with them. I think all of them are pretty functional. I personally prefer the more hunter method yeah. uh, just because I feel like having those just meaty. Like it is so satisfying to be in lane and like land a super chunky third hit on the hunter oh, when yes. you trade and Feels like really good you get hit for like 80 damage and then you hit them for like 130 and they're just like oh my gosh yeah it's it's a lot of fun uh they so are chunky. it feels so he's very refreshing to play <laughs> as a hunter he does not feel like any other hunter but you can tell he is of the hunter class where the fuck did he go um we're gonna try and do the voice pack though i am told we might have an issue with that but we'll dip our toe in the water and see if that works i do not Simply might be to stop you. We could be sharing tales over some warm mead. <sighs> what? Such a waste of effort. Your the heart, womp womp womp. So it good. beats with fear and cowardice. <laughs> Why? Isn't that kind of that messed up that he uses the horn that's supposed to signal Ragnarok for a little bit of a joke? You know? <laughs> <Let's> <laughs> you be like, I, I, I think it's one of our best taunt animations of it all time. It will be fun, they said. Well, no more. I still have to repair the pillory Mir crashed into. 
Yeah, smite cart was a lot. I must <laughs> always keep an ear listening for threats. It would be much easier if Thor didn't insist on eating a diet rich in beans. <laughs> Attack! Beans. Attack fire giant! <laughs> <laughs> it, this god's it's it just the best um, this god is just awesome bro uh, Paul, you want to give us a little bit more background on that voice yeah i hope so, the bts just, is up we, soon we dude we actually had to iterate quite a bit because we wanted Good to try and get a uh, more authentic Great. kind of more accent, um which uh it's kind of difficult to represent there's oh a lot my of different god. Of culture it's also uh, ancient so no if the scaling is sick on this god yeah so you have to like kind of like, like they say into, like, a lot of like really generally might be fun as fuck trying to figure out how things are pronounced um and so we went back and forth a lot on that but we tried to make sure that we were closer to authentic than we have been for traditionally other norse characters um as well as just we wanted to make his personality kind of shine through on the voice pack so you can see when he was joking around and when he was kind of like taunting some of them were like disappointed that like he's not bro he a one shot up. build he didn't welcome someone as an ally and said now he has to face you as an enemy um but he's going to do it because if if that's what the situation calls for if if he needs to i wonder if take up his act <laughs> he's going to i wonder how this is going to play out this is going to be um, interesting if you change your mind and want some more meat, i want to see this guy in lane as a good. hunter the voice sounds great and um, jungle potential if you're using the po the good the crystal perfectly and actually this will be a fun challenge for you casters he pronounces his name. So that crystal's gonna get me killed because I'm gonna use it aggressive like an asshole. Like him Delir, Heimdall, we've just all been calling him Heimdall. Yep. So it can be your old Hebo Habwa. Y'all can pick which ones you want. If some of you want to be a Willish correct, or if some of you just want to pronounce it the easy way so people know who you're talking about. I go back and forth, and I know that's the worst of all the you options. You have to pick one. I know. I, I have to yeah. pick one. I'm pretty firmly in the Heimdall. I'm gonna use the English pronunciation. The modern Heimdall English pronunciation for sure. Things, but we have a lot of people that really appreciate the correct pronunciation. And oh. this character is just filled with so much character. I mean, this is his recolor. He is described as the shining one, which is why his base is very white and very bright. It's why when he fires his ultimate, he starts to glow like hot, bright white. And then for the recolor, he wanted to give a little bit more like modern, darker interpretation of him. Mm -hmm. And this just looks just straight up badass. Am I right? Reminds yeah. me of the, of the trailer for sure, where he's throwing the ax around and has that sort of trail to it, like we can see in this card art. That, that yeah. looks amazing. I do also want to give a shout out to Andrew, the effects artist who worked on Heimdall. Um, he knows a lot about Norse mythology. He's very into Norse mythology. And he actually took a lot of time in, you can see like the the targeter effects are very ornate and really like handcrafted. Um, the runes on them are like accurate to act, like he actually tried mm. to go out and research and find the accurate representation of various aspects that are being conveyed by the ability. Um, and so you can see those runes around there. Those, oh, wow. those are more than just yeah. flavor. Or they like, have meaning. They have meaning. I don't know what they all are, but he would <laughs> he can tell you. That yeah. is so cool. And his, his runes he uses to mark the Bifrost portals are the first and last letter of the ancient uh, runic alphabet. Yeah. Yeah, so alphabet it's like A to Z, it. traveling from A to Z. Ah, yeah, there's a I lot of love in these effects. Yeah, that's and what they those came mean. Out really, really well. I just didn't want to get put So you there's guys a the lot. Spot. This character is just filled with so much detail and theme into every ability and every every animation. It's it's awesome. This is his uh, mastery art. Yep, this is the mastery art for the gold skin, of course. Th th I think that w when there is a character that everyone has been requesting like heimdall i, I imagine that you guys feel a little bit more pressure to, to do what the fans maybe maybe not expect but what they should what they might want to be delivered mm -hmm. i feel like they should be blown away with heimdall he, he's so much fun to play and uh and just as complicated as every pawn god needs to be you know yeah you gotta just, throw the three in there there is there is a good bit of pressure. This we god do, out of we ten, really hard to meet expectations, and then still. I don't find know the scaling, but like his abilities, abilities uh, wise. I know like one of the most common community pitches was a guardian that makes more wars. He's pretty fucking like, sick. Nah, we're gonna do something. I wouldn't say the coolest AJ, thing in the game until I play it. I know, right? It but it's so easily hard. like a nine ability or ten one, out of ten god. Ability too, he makes a difference. <laughs> it's unique as fuck. It's gonna be hard to play, so a lot of low level players are gonna fucking suck dick on this god. Feel really good about where we end up. That's what I'm afraid of, bro. I just think this type of character fits really well with an aggressive character because it gets you really good balance. I'm going to have to do a guide on this god. Warding, Assuming I can jungle him, I'll do a guide really, on him this I week. Mean, of course, you can oh, be from PTS. With tanking warding, but a lot of our tanks, they do other stuff. 
Oh yeah. So this character, I think, would have struggled. In that Yo, the scaling's available. Yeah, please do. Fuck yeah. Decision, and I just think he's he's gonna be really fun. If you're looking at like it's gonna be great. Eighty percent plus scaling. Heimdall, of course. If you want to know more about the PTS and all that kind of stuff, Smite game on Twitter. The scaling is literally everything because his abilities base damage, aside from the ult, don't look crazy. That's why it's day early. Which makes sense. And they did say scaling was good on everything but the one. Times to get information. It's always possible on PTS might be there. Yeah. So if he's yeah, got like 100% you know, scaling you on the ult, sure that and you can give Fornor power, for and do a fucking 1500 damage ult, Thank you guys so much for watching. Squish. It'd be hard to get on a squishy though. Their beads would have to be done. Make sure you eat lots of turkey and mashed potatoes. We'll see you next time here on the update show.